Hello, guys. Welcome to our stream. Should we do our stream? Okay, to start, how about you introduce yourself first, Rose? I am Laxa Rose. You can just call me Rose. I am an over-caffeinated plant that does life to tea. That's my entire intro. I have nothing more. Hello, gamers. Hello, gamers. Today, we're talking about how not to get yoinked or your money. You don't want your money yoinked. You want to get a model. You want to get a good, pretty model like mine. You want to get a very pretty anime waifu who has like really big honk donks <laughs> The first section of our talk podcasting is budgeting. And the first thing that we want to discuss is how much models cost. And average quality rig mm -hmm. is around $500 for the art and $500 for the rigging people should expect to spend at least like a thousand dollars for a nice model this is where yeah. riggers and artists would definitely think about does the quality of my work reflect the price and that's like something that's difficult to discuss personally you just gotta guess a price you get too many you pull it up mm. you get too few you pull it down you kind of try to scale it based on the demand that you get when you try to compare your prices to others sometimes it's it isn't helpful like personally i've experienced seeing a live 2d beginner charging as much as i am and they also don't have anything in their portfolio so i was like hmm you want to like take a general look at the pricing of uh, everyone else looking at other people might be a good place to kind of start if you absolutely don't know how to price your work and just see what it's like from there uh what should one's budget look like if you're new to vtubing mm -hmm. and you're in that like one to five year range probably don't want to waste two thousand dollars because that two thousand dollars could be spent on other stuff that could get your stream more viewers mm -hmm. like improving your computer like improving your microphone improving your audio mm -hmm. maybe getting an editing program maybe getting a few obs assets or new games that are popular that could get you more viewers so that money has a better place to be spent than just on a model yeah exactly if you have a very pretty model and you have very um <laughs> very bad audio i don't think people are going to stay when you're streaming because yeah. audio is very important for a vtuber isn't audio the most important part of like any stream because most people would like usually put their stream on the second monitor it's better to have like something nice to listen to than something yeah. pretty to look at instead of trying to make your stream more aesthetically pleasing i think beginner vtubers should work on their content content first and like you know other hardware stuff to make sure that the stream yeah. runs nice i mean what's the use of a really nice model when you don't have the hardware to run it look at me <laughs> with this model that can't stream any games man i was like that before i had a model but i can't stream any game so i just did a lot of just chatting and that was even like there were frame drops man i don't even know why people fucking watch <laughs> Uh, it's because uh, you're, you're the hero Mori. Right? Damn, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't starve because of a VTuber model. Oh, Rule gosh. number one, do not go into debt. So let's say you have the money. How will you allocate your budget? How much should you spend on art and rig? And are there things that you should consider? Yeah, that kind of stuff? Yeah, really. In my opinion. <laughs> in my humble opinion, but it's very not humble. If your budget is 600, you would want to go for like a $300 PSD and a $300 rigger. If your budget is 1000, you'd want to allocate 500 to rigging, 500 to art. As you go into like higher and higher budgets, mm -hmm. you're likely going to either go spend more on your rigging or more on your art, mm -hmm. which will depend on your personal preferences, what you're going to use it for. So basically, you want to have a pretty good balance between art and rig. Like sometimes it's fine to have really good art and like average rig. I mean, if you can't help it personally, I'd be okay with having really good art and an okay rig rather than like an art that is not very good and then you get a rigger that's like super super top tier a rig cannot carry bad art or badly cut art but a good art can pretty much forgive a meh or okay rig some vtubers especially if they've already got a good roster of their parents <laughs> like a good artist and a good rigger a lot forget about extra expenses stuff like like additional cutting people should try to remember to allocate extra like don't budget too tight being a vtuber unless you're making your own assets and your own model and rigging your own model all that can be really really expensive please consider your condition your situation mm. if you can even afford all of that please don't 
killed Wallet Coon, please. You have gachas to hold on as well. Moving on to the next topic is choosing a rigger and artist. We are going to discuss where you can find your riggers and illustrators and what are the red flags and green flags you should look out for and also how vendors like artists and riggers could avoid looking like a scammer. <laughs> Like what you could do to look more credible. You don't want to look like a stinky joinker. You, you don't want to, you want people to trust you, right? I mean, we're serious. We're serious, okay? We're professional. First off, where to shop? I'm gonna fucking say it. Don't fucking go to Fiverr, dude. You're not gonna the amount of times people's work have been stolen and posted there, it's, it's just annoying. <laughs> One of the best places to look for artists and illustrators is the live 2D server. There's a lot of people looking for jobs there and there's also a VTuber.gg. Yeah, VTuber.gg. You can basically see what people's work looks like because I think the site allows people to post videos as thumbnails. So you can take a look at how good I'm their rigs are. For people that don't know, VTuber.gg is a mm. website run by the live 2D community yeah. server. Honestly, the best place to look for a VTuber <laughs> artists and rigger is twitter but there's quite a lot of artists and riggers who are not in guilds and are not like you know popular so you're gonna find a lot of diamonds in the how the fuck do you pronounce it rose diamonds in the rough rough yes rough thank you hello it is me from the future Besides what we have already recommended, there are other places that you can commission artists. And one of those places, which I have seen a lot on my like Twitter timeline, is Vegan. Vegan? Vegan? I'm not sure. <laughs> but it is spelled like that. And yeah, I think that too is worth checking out. One of the best ways to hunt for Rigo is to open Twitch, find a VTuber that you like the rig of, oh, then go yeah. to the credits and see who yeah. the rigger is. Just look at nice models and browse and look at who their parents are, steal their parents, kidnap them, pay yeah. them money and then release them after the work's done. <laughs> it's always good to have kind of a list of people you want to commission because not everyone will match your schedule and stuff. So yeah, it'll be good to compile all the people you'll potentially hire and to narrow them down as much as possible based on what you want and what your schedule is if your client is contacting multiple people multiple artists or riggers it would be really nice if you inform the other people you have contacted as soon as possible if you've already found an artist or rigger that you'll accept or suits your needs so they're like well i'm gonna commission you next week mm. next week's come i hear nothing for another week and i dm the person i'm like Hey, um, how is the art going? Because they, they told me uh, the art mm. will be done in a week. Oh, I found somebody else. That is one of the main reasons why I implemented a 10% non-refundable fee to kind of like confirm your slot. I feel like most artists and riggers will understand, just be honest. I wouldn't be mad if somebody found another rigger because mm. that's fair enough. How about you start with the red flags? <laughs> oh. Big fucking red flag doesn't have a, a portfolio. I can't see your work. If I can't see anything, I yeah. just wouldn't. It's a really, really big red flag when someone doesn't have a portfolio or even works in progress on their Twitter or any social media that they have. That's like a big red flag. And then they're also charging really high prices. Like that's a, that's a huge red flag for me. When you're a beginner, sometimes it's fine to take the hit and just do like one, two, three models for free. I've mm -hmm. done six models for free before and started taking commissions because those models aren't like to make money though to build a portfolio and mm -hmm. having a portfolio is more important than earning that 80 dollars that you'd get as a beginner ago <laughs> have your portfolio available in as many forms because when you post like a showcase of your model or your art on twitter it could accidentally blow up and get you clout which is good it's also beneficial to your growth as well in general mm -hmm. so post your yeah. fucking models post showcases yeah. post your and post whips, well, dude. gain the cloud gain the cloud yes, gain the cloud gain all the cloud you can on twitter whips involving physics cool toggles impressive head angles and lip syncing those who usually get a decent amount of traction another thing the portfolio has not consistent quality i think it would be more suspicious if the quality of the rigging goes up and down and then they don't offer tears i would be really suspicious more of a red flag for model art i think someone might be 
tracing or taking i don't know doing some sus stuff in the background that's why the quality of the model art like fluctuates a lot essentially the lack of a terms of service is kind of a red flag or when it's like private and you have to email them i feel like it's kind of cumbersome when you have to email someone to get their terms of service it's kind of like those things on facebook where you list something for sale and you don't post the price and you keep on getting all these comments <laughs> hm hm how much how much and you keep on trying to message them that's like a waste of time with regards to the stuff you should include in your tos i think the most important things are specifying what kind of service you are providing the timeline refunds and the rights to the art what your client can and cannot do and what you can and cannot do if you dream your art a lot and if you send your rigging a lot and if you show a lot of whips on twitter i think charging for prices is fully fair because mm -hmm. you are losing that clout of posting that out if you post your art a lot and your main source of content is your work like me yeah i would charge a good percentage of the total commission price for the privacy fee with NDAs, usually will come from companies so usually yeah. you'd have <laughs> a lot of like contracts and agreements with mm -hmm. NDAs. So usually when you have to sign a contract, you also should charge a contract fee. Mm -hmm. Full upfront payment. Yeah, full upfront payments. So I, I prefer doing half and half. Mm -hmm. Getting that other half kind of motivates me to work more. <laughs> I, I wouldn't send an upfront payment to a beginner mm -hmm. again. I would send an upfront payment to like someone who's really experienced. Full upfront artist workers so are either scammers or have been scammed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you just have to make sure that there's like a refund policy and maybe also don't do chargebacks before for talking to your artist. Oh, oh, also, for the riggers, to avoid chargeback scams, please document everything. Mm -hmm. All of your conversations, you sending your client in general, <laughs> just communicate. I think this is a pretty good segue to our next red flag, which is found in the Live2D community Discord blacklist. I've seen a lot of vendors who got blacklisted because they did not communicate with their client. Straight up ghosting them, dude. If you're feeling bad <laughs> or like sick, just say, hey client, I'm, I'm feeling a bit sick. I don't think anyone will be it. like, oh, refund me all of my money because you're yeah. sick. Both sides should be just really honest and try to communicate as much as possible because for artists and riggers, your client isn't there with you physically and see what you're working on. So you have to make the effort to send them whips unless it's like something that has to do with your payment plan and clients i actually have a specific term in my terms of service where i say if you withheld any negative comments during the rigging process and it's something that you want change i'll be charging you for it i'm very accommodating when it comes to revisions and stuff i encourage clients to be really honest with me because i really want to create something that you like that you love personally i will like re-rig about seven times eight times as long as like they don't like it mm. but the second they say they're okay with it looks good yeah. and i move to the next part i will charge revisions and it would be also really nice if you have kind of a clear -ish direction of what you want and not have your artist do this change again and again and then you'd want to go back to the original thing that they did that would be a little <laughs> So, our next red flag, recent callout post. If someone, if one of the clients went like, oh, well, he ghosted me for like three months. Mm -hmm. And like, it's very recent, like posted like a month ago. I'd say like callout post like two years ago, I would kind of like, I'd still be careful with them. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't go full on, oh, they're going to scam me. But if it's like very recent, I, I'd avoid. Yeah, that's actually one thing clients can do when they're shopping for an artist or rigger. They could try to search their handle on Twitter and just see if there's, you know, call up posts about them yeah i think i would like to address what Ryan said in chat please do not ask an artist or rigger to exactly mimic a style of another artist or rigger unless you want to pay the asking price of that other artist or rigger if you're using us as a cheaper way to get something it's incredibly disrespectful yeah like don't bro don't do that that's cringe i'm fine with people sending me references for like how they okay. want their model to move like the hair or the hands or like their pet or something like that don't ask me to mimic Dude, a single rigger right let's move to the green flags yeah okay you comprehensive terms of service anything you don't want to do anything you do want to do yeah. how you want to work and all of the conditions that you would prefer refund policy should be yeah. like defined like maybe you want to don't want to do refunds mm -hmm. after a certain percentage of the post or after some part has been rigged well defined pricing, pricing makes yeah. sense so uh, i charge this one for the base and really complicated 
complicated mm-hmm. paths are gonna be this much and this is gonna be this much some people actually have calculators on their website everyone <laughs> everyone in our rigging server almost everyone has that fucking calculator <laughs> So basically, the last two is having a portfolio and already existing work. It's okay for beginners to not have this because, yeah, they're beginners, I, dude. Vetted by the Live 2D like, community and other artists or riggers. The Live 2D community has a specific role called commission. Basically, they have been confirmed through a lot of like checks from the Live mm. 2D mod team. If you're a client, you could just search their handle and then attach the term VTuber to it or Mama or Papa. And then you'll see how many children they have and you can kind of like stalk them see if they said anything bad about their parents <laughs> <laughs> you know how children are <laughs> our next topic is how to examine the quality of life to the rig so first thing that you could check is face angles quality the face shouldn't have a drastic narrowing effect when turning like when you are turning side to side there shouldn't be like a drastic like you know oh the space between the eyes gets so narrow and then suddenly wide and the head should move naturally and not just bounce. The forehead shouldn't look very flat when you are turning, especially when the model has bangs. Like in general, just check if the model's like head angles are rigged to have volume. I mean, what clients can do to check for head angle quality is look at other people's rigs and kind of just compare it. There are a lot of riggers who post showcases on YouTube and Twitter. Yeah. And if you know any riggers who are good at head angles you can kind of like use that as a base (laughs) yeah like me yeah (laughs) but of course manage your expectations if you didn't pay a huge 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 amount of money the next one is corner fluidity corner fluidity so basically all of the corners look like they move into each other naturally Mm. and they don't like you have a lot of stretching eyes get disproportionate the mouth bends a lot that's all kind of signs of um bad corners you should just check for any weird displacements or warping stretching and narrowing on the model Mm -hmm. when you move you could try nodding your head up and down see if there's anything weird going on look inside to side just see if everything moves smoothly and not suddenly stretching (laughs) personally i am fine with clients pointing out mistakes that they'd see even after delivery it's a win-win situation they get a good product I improve. This one's also will require a bit of an example, but basically when the head angles, like the ears kind of slide out of the position that they should be in. Things should look like they're where they should be and not moving independently when they should be connected to something. I think we could safely move on to the next. This is yep. mouth movements. Oh yeah, mouth. Yeah, mouth. mouth movements. Ideally, you can see all of the mouth movements or like at least a few mouth movements. Not like my model, but not having any movement at all. <laughs> <laughs> we have this point when I have not the best one. <laughs> Tracking. Yeah, that's one thing that people should consider when they are checking someone's rig. Are they using an iPhone, a webcam, an Android, or the new GTX tracking thing that VTube Studio just released? Again, this applies to mostly all of the points that we're going to discuss. But yeah, people could check out streams and just see how the model performs and just keep in mind what tracking they might be using hi it is future me again (laughs) i would personally recommend checking out a riggers showcase more compared to just looking at a vtuber stream and also make sure that the rigger is using tracking and not manually animating the model when they are making the showcase this just really shows how the model will perform, you know? Because when you animate it, it's like you're manually controlling it. It might not reflect how the model actually performs. Sometimes there are people who aren't used to their model yet or don't have a lot of practice when it comes to facial acting. Shy Lily discusses this best in one of her clips and I recommend checking it out if you have the time because I want to emphasize that Yeah, you can definitely look at streamers and see what their model looks like, but there will be cases where it won't be 100% reflective of a model's quality. 
next point physics okay. physics are a bit of a complicated thing maybe what you're looking for is like very bouncy very energetic physics mm. and like the entire hair just like just like moves around like everywhere rah, rah, rah. or maybe you're a bit more like me and you don't like the hair moving too much and then it's mm. like a bit stiffer but a bit smoother in the movement it all depends and you should also check like body physics maybe you really want your belly to move because uh, <laughs> I don't know you're in a bikini or something it would be nice if Rose <laughs> shows us some of the volume that they have in their model <laughs> yeah, wah, wah. volume yes yeah, they have quite yeah. a lot of volume yeah quite a lot of and volume and now my head is great <laughs> yeah there see like you could see that when Rose turns to the size you could see how the volume of the even... chest is expressed really nicely <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shoulders are also really hard to get correct. Yeah. Because sometimes uh, people will rig shoulders and it will more look like the shoulder is just like sliding left and right more mm. than moving. Because when you just make it slide, it kind of just looks a little off. Next point, body part shouldn't look out of place. You don't have the shoulder moving really weirdly, the knees somehow bending outward. In general, yeah. they should be rotating and deforming the same amount. I think we can move okay. on to the next one, which is related uh, to illustration because more. Because just make sure that okay. the anatomy of the illustration is like sound even if it's stylized so the last one that we recommend checking is the clipping and draw order issues i personally don't like it when the draw order is changed very yeah, suddenly noticeable. like when the model turns its head there's like maybe an accessory or a bang or something and it just changes position just, i consider it a severe mistake so we've compiled so... some kind of list of some kind of list <laughs> <laughs> of the rigors and so art Artist that we recommend, yeah. This is not all them. though, there's definitely a lot of talented people out like. there. So first one is Zweri. I've worked with them long ago and their cutting is just so good. And then next one is KGR Mama Egerik K, the one who did Phoebe's illustration. They needed some improvements in cutting but they're very pleasant to work with and their art is aesthetically pleasing. Next one is Sasuchi. I've worked with them on Emirichi's model and Sasuchi just does nice separation and works really fast when I've requested for revisions. Next one is Hiana Natsu. Yeah. They communicate very clearly. It's very nice. Man, I loved working with them. They're so hype. Very nice cuts too. Another one is Kamochiru. I mean, I don't think I have to say a lot about Kamochiru. <laughs> I just say we all seem for Kamo art in, in the region. <laughs> All f riggers in the server wants to rig Komatsuru's art. Komatsuru, I barely did any revisions on their art and barely had to. I think I never asked them to revise anything. That's how good the model was. These next two, they have pretty nice cutting. Clevenzu and Dewey, they make really nice you know, models in their cute so too. My first recommendation is Jacobon. Working with her is really nice. Sometimes I think she knows how to cut better than <laughs> me. We've been working on a model and she like comes up with a cutting solution that mm -hmm. works way better than what I thought about. <laughs> so there will be no cutting issues mm. from her at least. Next one is my own model mother, Hani Komira. Whenever there's like a cutting issue or anything, she'll immediately take care of it. She listens and is really good. My last recommendation is Cyan. Cyan is a bit of a, a smaller art but cutting is really good and the art is very adorable and it's very fun to work with her. Moving on to and our her... recommendations for riggers. Myself and Kira. <laughs> we very recommend ourselves. Yes, we recommend each I other. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in rigor mortis for real for real. <laughs> And yeah. for people outside of rigor mortis, I could recommend Sela, Sai, Ran, Ransom, and Bree. The last three, they are yeah. in our rigging server. They just make really, really good work. And we also have Dila, which also has quite nice rigs. Mm -hmm. We shall now move to a Q&A. How do you feel when someone calls you talented versus skilled? I feel a little bad when someone calls me talented. Just a little, but it kind of like disregards the hard work I've I, done. I, when people say talented, they probably don't do a lot of creative work. So they mm -hmm. kind of like don't really understand the efforts or like the entire process of learning. So I just like yeah. when they say, oh, you're so talented. I just hear like, oh, your work looks good. And that's the only way I read it. That's the best interpretation of it. And that's likely what they mean. Oh, there is one question a while ago about identifying bogus or scam clients. I haven't really Ooh, encountered bogus or scam clients, but I do have a couple of 
of measures to kind of like prevent being scammed. I think the less clear what they want is, the more yeah. cautious you be. If they come to you and they're like fully prepared, here are all of my refs, here's what I want. They probably are really prepared for it. Even then, really hard to tell. Yeah, because some people because legit campaign... don't have a very clear idea and would like to give the artist and the rigor freedom to do what they do best. Yeah. But someone is like really new and like this is probably the first time commissioning a model, be a bit more skeptical with them, mm. cover yourself a bit better. And also don't give the completed work when you don't have the full payment. What sites do you recommend selling on? The Live 2D Discord is a very good place to start. Also Twitter. How does one identify art that is made by an AI? Oh, this is hard. Yeah, um, it is hard. If you look at it, geometry looks mm. weird. Six fingers, seven fingers. Um, yeah, the hands, the hair hands. Looks weird. It's too boring. Um, yeah, too generic. All right, that's... All right, here. Where can chat find you? Oh, um, <laughs> well, my chat, you can find me at twitter.com slash kidomori. And I do a lot of live 2D reading content. I do a lot of tutorials. <laughs> oh, well, then how about you, Rose? Where can people find you so you can get your well-deserved gal out? You can find me at twitter.com slash laxerose. That is um, this yeah, spell it, Twitter, spell it, spell I it. I don't think I can even spell it. <laughs> what the fuck? Yes, Otsu, Otsu, we will see you again. Mm.